Okay, Jason, I thought it would be fun if we answer some questions from readers who may or may not be fictitious. Sounds fun. Okay, after the questions, we're gonna do a lightning round. We're both gonna answer those. Okay. Ready? This question is from Maureen from Urbana-Champaign. Maureen wants to know, why did we distinguish justice from fairness? Well, so for most of the literature's life cycle, we've not done that. Uh, you could measure the perceived consistency and accuracy of a process and call that procedural justice. You can measure the perceived accuracy and, and consistency of a process and call that procedural fairness. We use, we use the terms interchangeably. That's different from, say, the trust literature, where trustworthiness means something very different from trust, and scholars care very much about that distinction. Uh, and in many ways, being laid back or, or type B about jargon has served us well. But what's starting to happen now is that these are, are assessing both perceived adherence to rules and an overall sense of appropriateness in the same study. And it becomes confusing to call both of those justice or call both of those fairness. And so in our review, we said, well, let's start calling these different things because when we measure them the way we measure them, they really are different things. Let's see what we have here. So, okay, this is Joel from Medford. Why did we drop the organizational moniker in our chapter? focusing instead solely on justice. Hmm. Well, quite simply, sometimes we're not talking about organizational justice. Sometimes we're talking about supervisor justice mm -hmm. or some other entity's justice. Uh, when we w originally were calling it organizational justice earlier in the field and we were looking at distributive justice or procedural justice, those studies were also looking at an organizational reference. So using organizational justice made sense. Right. But now we've been looking at supervisor justice or teams, and so using that moniker isn't quite appropriate. So depending on whose justice we're talking about, that's the referent that we use. Sounds good. Okay. This question is from Rob from Chapel Hill. Rob asks, so where do we stand on the multifoci issue? Should the focus of justice be matched to the target of the outcome variable? So I think it depends on your conceptual lens. Uh, if, if, it, if that distinction matters to your lens, then conceptually do the study that way. Take social exchange theory as an example. If your dependent variable is you helping a supervisor, then it makes some conceptual sense to, to focus justice on that supervisor because that's the exchange relationship. Uh, but understand empirically, it's often not gonna work out that focus matching will result in higher correlations. Uh, I think what most studies show is supervisors are simply more predictive when you measure justice in reference to them. Uh, and so supervisor justice kind of trumps organizational justice regardless of the outcome, even when the outcome is organizational focused. Uh, I don't think we know why that is quite yet. Maybe people are simply more salient than organizations. Maybe it means that the organizational referent is itself a little bit murky. Uh, what does it mean, really? Does it mean top management? Does it mean the CEO? Does it mean my boss's boss? Does it mean the firm as what some people call a juristic person? And so I think what I tend to do in my work and what many of us tend to do is just kind of always use a supervisor referent mm -hmm. because that's going to maximize variance explained and that's often what we're trying to do uh, in our work. Okay. So, okay, this is uh, from Bob from Palo Alto. How does the changing nature of work alter the way we study justice? Hmm. Well, I think in some ways it doesn't. Uh, regardless of how dynamics are changing at work, people still seem to be very concerned about fairness and how they're treated by their supervisors. Mm -hmm. um, but what it does do is it changes where we're communicating from and how often we're communicating. So if people are working from home or from satellite offices and they have their smartphones and they're connected all the time, they are inundated right. with more justice-related events and more justice-related rela information to deal with. All right, it's ready, time for the lightning round. Okay, I will set our timer for two minutes. Okay. First question, what is your favorite empirical justice article? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, if I stay more recently, I think I would say Johnson, Lenage, and Barnes being procedurally just as a boss, it just makes me tired. I would say mine is Scott and colleagues, AMJ on why do managers act fairly. I liked that it looked at motives and it looked with, within supervisor differences. So Kate, what's your favorite non-empirical justice article? 
I would say for me, Greenberg, 1990s, yesterday, today, okay. and tomorrow. Um, I think that pa that paper did. Uh, for the early years, what we're hoping to do with our article on synthesizing what's been done so far. And I'll stay with narrative years. I'll go Crobbins on burn, Bobo Cell and Rups, 2001 JVB, because we, there's stuff in that article that we studied for the next 15 years. Event versus entities in that article, the multiple needs models in that article, clarifying and conceptualizing social exchange theory. Great stuff uh, in that piece. Okay, what is your favorite justice theory? I would go fairness heuristic theory. A lot of series of tight lab studies uh, that are that then were kind of synthesized in two really good theory introducing articles. I think that's scientific progress at its best. I'm gonna have to go with fairness heuristic theory also, but my reasons are that it answers more of our questions. It tells us not only why do people care about fairness, but also what behaviors are likely to outcome. And so Kate, what's your favorite justice dimension? Okay, my favorite justice dimension is gonna be interpersonal justice because it gives managers more discretion. Sometimes the outcomes are what they are and the procedures are what they are, but interpersonal justice, there's something that managers can still do to make employees' experiences more fair. And so I guess I would say procedural justice. I mean, th there's so much I could say about procedural justice. It, it somewhat started it all. Before that, we just had the equity theory literature. It wasn't really the justice literature until there were two dimensions of, well, I guess we'll wait for further thoughts on procedural justice for the next article that we write uh, on this topic. Sounds good.